Danielle Stevenson, 130949. Thank you. Very eloquently put. Um, so you just did your director's piece yeah. and were well, you were director yeah. and then you did a uh, timeless watch which was your contemporary piece yeah. for the unit six and as well as performing you had to take on additional roles within that I just want to talk to me a bit about your director's piece and how you found being a director what things you had to consider lists that you had to make how you rehearsed yeah you just I found the directing piece very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. I did another directing piece that I didn't enjoy as much, mm -hmm. called Lasted, but that's because I didn't have an uh, opportunity to express my own ideas and methods. Mm -hmm. So with this directing piece, I wrote my own script, yeah. wrote in the characters, I knew what I wanted the play to be about. Mm -hmm. And then, as soon as I wrote it, I had an idea of who I wanted to play the characters, so everything just fell into place with dying in your arms, my piece. Okay, okay. So how did you, how did you prepare your actors? Like, who were you, influ were you influenced by any practitioners, directors? I used a bit of, um, like, I used... I'm not sure who used it to be honest, but I separated them before I let them be together. Mm -hmm. I think it was Meisner, yeah. I think it was Meisner, because I wanted them to feel awkward when they came together at last, when it came to like script reading, because I didn't want to push them too far, mm -hmm. because they are lower level. So I made them learn the script separately, and then did, on the spot, I would just tell them improvised scene, tell them what I needed to see in front of me, mm -hmm. give them a time specific area and then make them come back and perform so they were always kept on their toes. Alright, okay. How did you find being a how did you find being a director in terms of how difficult do you think it was it in is. comparison to being because you've always done performing yeah. acting. Yeah. Um, I didn't know how hard it would be getting the actors focused because mm -hmm. one of my one of my actors had a thing where he could not keep still for the more than five minutes, so it was kind of hard keeping him engaged. But I found a way to do it in the end, you know, keeping him on his feet, like using that approach. Um, what exercises did you use? Did you use exercises? Yeah, I used. I use physical exercises where I'd make them do a scene but not speak any words so I could see how the body moved because there was a violent, a very violent scene in my piece and I needed, I needed to see how they would react and how they felt about approaching each other and physical contact with each other is something I want to really focus on because they weren't sure about it at first but the more I, can, the more I explained that nobody would get hurt and I had choreographed the whole fight scene mm. and they seemed to calm down and they really enjoyed it after that. Okay. Good. Yeah, nice. Have you learned anything that the experience of directing this time round that if you had to direct a game maybe next year that you would think I would do that differently or I'll include this or I'll look at this at the end I of would I would work on it so much more. I like the piece, I like the way it looked and the way it turned out, but I'd, I'd love to have a background storyline and, mm. you know, not, not to make it longer, but to make it more, in, more enjoyable because it wasn't really enjoyable. It was an uncomfortable piece of theatre, so I'd kind of add more to it, mm. but without changing the layout and the violence. I just polish it up a lot more. Mm. Alright, okay, because you were in quite a tight um, time frame. And, and not finding a space sometimes to rehearse because yeah. everybody was doing direction at the same time. I know. Sometimes I'd have to, because I did some rehearsals outside mm. because I, I, don't, I don't know where I got this idea from, but I told them one day because one of my actors, I won't say name, was very uncomfortable and fidgeting. So I said, listen, let's go outside. He wasn't sure about performing as well. So I said, if we can perform a script outside, you can perform it into in front of people you don't know. And after that, he just chilled out and then became more engaged with the script. So do you think you're starting to find your own style? Yeah, I, I like, like, 
it could start, be it said, but doing something very simple this time, I found a new, new, I like shopping theatre, mm. I think that's what I call it, I've gone from abs- like an absurd theatre to kind of going into shopping, because I heard one of the audience members when they were violently just like take a breath in, mm. and that, I was backstage, and that just made yeah. me feel so much better about yeah. everything. Just that little gas that when, had that impact and when one of my actors were getting beaten up on stage, which yeah. they were. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, for your your timeless witch piece, which was a contemporary piece. So there was you and three other members, yes. as well as yourself, so we're all together. How did you decide? Because obviously you're all performers. We don't have the luxury of having sort of lighting people and costume people and all yeah. that sort of stuff. So you had to take on the rules. How did you decide on the rules and who did what? We just kind of fit into it. Like somebody was more direct in it. It just came natural in me. I had a very keen sense for the props and making the props as stupid as possible and the costume making that childish and. So my, my main role was costume, definitely, but we all took the props role between us. Mm. So the props were shared between us, but my I was focused on costume. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Because obviously working in something like costume in here where there's not the budget and there's not the luxury. I found ways around it. So you found ways around it, so you went out and sourced different things for different yeah, I use things. simple things that are already be all around us. Mm. For example, water cups. Yeah. Water cups as noses. You yeah. n- no money needed and it, it's, that's added to the performance. And you use the well. bin bags as well. And how you? stupid representing a witch in the witch hat and the nose looked mm. really on stage. So that like that idea of being quite stereotypical. Yeah. Um okay, good. Um from that then, if you were evaluating other people's contributions compared to yours, how well did you work together? Was there an obvious leader? Yeah. There weren't an obvious leader, but people took charge in different areas, different things. Like the drama scene was definitely one of my co-actors, because she really enjoyed that scene. And then we all took a different scene on to us. So we worked together really, really well. Yeah. It was an enjoyable experience. So leading on, because obviously you move on for this course next year, what roles do you think, and research and the roles that you've been looking at, what roles do you think suit you, or do you think they might have a strength for? I like, like directing. It might not be my strength to everybody, but that's what I enjoy the most. I've done yeah. producing, co-directing. But directing, it kind of gives you, I don't want to say a buzz, but it kind of does. Mm. You've been in charge of something that you're creating from scratch. Mm. It's just every actor's little dream to create something that's the world. Lovely, thank you very much. Thank you, thanks.